Let's talk about the dollar. And 85% of the transactions are still done in the dollar. You pointed out in a recent speech that you think we've crossed the Rubicon. Are you comfortable saying what you said there, that, that, that for the first time in your career, you think we lose reserve status at some point? I'm comfortable with it. That's my central case. As you know, Joe, I can change my mind. But yeah, um, you said that to some extent, the Fed is enabling the fiscal transfers. It's not to some extent. They couldn't be doing this without the Fed. The Fed is monetizing their activity. I mentioned all the QE after vaccine confirmation and retail sales. We've had 850 billion of direct transfers, 575 billion of them came after retail sales were above trend, 575 of the 850 billion. I'm old enough to remember the, the bond market vigilantes. I used to be one of them. Without the Fed buying, I don't know what the exact number is, I think it's 60% of all the debt issued, the, the bond markets would be totally rejecting this. So they are enabling this massive expansion in fiscal policy, and the problem is if you end up getting inflation, and frankly, even if you don't, the debt is going to be so big. You remember I did my entitlement talks eight or nine years ago. That's all happened except for one thing, the interest rate level. So we're right now in the crux of when the demographic, when the baby boomers accelerate in terms of, of getting Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, that stuff. Right as we're doing that, we just put six trillion of new debt on. Again, all enabled by the Fed. These guys could not be doing it. Bond rates would go to a prohibitive level. So my, my issue here is in the future, um, as we go forward, if you look at, do you have chart five up there? Let's get it. I think we can do it. Uh, which one? Uh, it's federal spending, Social Security, major health care programs, federal spending is a percent of GDP. This, this is the CBO. This is not me. Okay. And they're saying if 10 years go to 4.9%, which is their normalized projection, the interest expense alone will be close to 30% of GDP every year. That's basically what we just spent on the COVID emergency in the last year. There is no way we can afford to have 30% of all government outlays be, be toward interest expense. So what will happen is the Fed will have to monetize that. When they monetize it, um, I believe it'll have horrible implications for the dollar. And that's why I said in that speech, yes, that I think it's more likely than not within 15 years we lose reserve currency status. Can we go to um, the chart on the dollar specifically? Because I think this is really important. Last spring, in the midst of an equity market meltdown, and I've been trading for 40 years and I've never seen anything like this, right in the middle of an equity market meltdown, the bond market went down 18 points one day. And everybody thought it was macro traders like me and others that were rejecting the, the implications of the CARES Act. The Fed did a deep dive, and by hindsight, foreigners sold a trillion dollars, a trillion, um, of treasuries overnight as we were proposing the CARES Act. They've continued to sell treasuries ever since then. Why is that important? Because for 20 years, treasuries have been the go-to asset of foreigners to hedge global portfolios with. In every case, whenever you had a problem in the equity market or in the world economy, they fled to treasuries and they fled to the dollar. Last spring, that was violated so since then, they've continued to sell treasuries. So what we've gone from is for 20 years, an average flow of 500 billion a year into treasuries from an outflow out of treasuries. Uh, so when you have a $700 billion current account deficit, our estimate for the year, you need capital to flow in to offset that. If you just erase 500 billion inflow and turn it into an outflow, you see the pressure will put on the dollar. A reasonable person might ask, well, if that's true, why did the dollar not go down from March to July? Very simple. Um, who was the biggest beneficiary of COVID? 
obviously the massive digital transformation companies, Google, Microsoft, not so massive, but Zoom, those kind of names. What country dominate in terms of those names? The United States of America. So the $500 billion outflow out of bonds was offset by a massive inflow from, from world central banks, from sovereign wealth funds into our equity market. Um, by July, they had become, that had become pretty much in the market. The relative prices had gone up. And frankly, the vaccine profile was starting to look better. So that is when the dollar peaked as that offset started to diminish. And as you know, Joe, the vaccine tends to cause a rotation out of growth stocks into value stocks. Our big advantage over here are the growth stocks. So that's why I think the pressure on the dollar is going to continue.